Hi everybody, I'm sorry, this is take two, um, so I apologize if you let, watched the last video and, spoiler alert, okay, so, I'm making this video because as I was doing my Bible study in Isaiah 41, I stumbled upon what is clearly uh, the Billy Meyer UFO case and the Pliarin information and all that stuff, and it's exposed for, and the prophecies expose it for what it truly is. Now, I'm sharing this because I, I don't mean to condemn. I don't mean to put down or condemn. It's not my place to judge. You know, we are still in the flesh, and as Jesus said, um, judge not lest you be judged. But in the same respect, um, I drank, as many know who have been following me, I drank out of this trough and have been feeding my brethren this information from the Billy Meyer case for quite some time. And, um, and, I, and I still see people not really able to cut the tie, that they're still interested in it and stuff, even though I personally have repented and have decided to completely close the door and not look back. Um, now I'm not condemning, it's not like, you know, follow me, it's not about me, okay? Um, you know, I'm going to start in prayer. Um, I, my, Lord, please, in Jesus' name, can you just guide me in, um, just in truth and righteousness that, of course, all glory goes to you, and, um, you know, if I may speak openly and completely honestly, I really don't know um, if I'm stepping over a line or um, or whatnot. I really don't know. Um, but the purpose of my heart is just to expose the truth and to benefit the body of Christ and to, for, and to benefit your kingdom, Lord. So may that come forth and may this be a, um, a fruitful and constructive seed to our fellow brethren. In Jesus' name, amen. So, to continue, my all, all I want to say about the Billy Meyer case, if people are still stuck on that information and woed into it, because, you know, maybe there is some right information in there. But, fundamentally, the root of that tree is fallible. Okay? Um, when we know, when it can be proven... That what they claim, not even about our Messiah and Jesus Christ and our biblical history is not true, but what they say about the Father, you know, they don't even, they claim that the Father doesn't even exist. And we know that just is not true. So why even continue feeding off of that trough when the root of that tree is completely fallible? And I'm going to use that word fallible. I'm not going to use corrupt. I'm not going to go there. Because um, it's not my place. But I'm going to use fallible. Severely, fundamentally fallible. So I just want to tell people. Or just inspire people. Please um, shut the door on that, on that case. As I did. And turn your back on it. And when you study... Okay, now I'm going to show you the proof is in the scriptures now. I, I've i been reading and I stumbled upon this and I'm just blown away. And I'm sorry, it's my duty to share this. I, I am not looking to condemn, but I was feeding off of this trough for a long time. And I was feeding my brethren this information. And... um. I've, I have repented and turned my back on it, but I believe it's my responsibility to close that door and to show why it should be shut and to expose it for what it is, and it is scriptural now. So, going into Isaiah 41, okay, um, right, verse 2 right here, um, God is going to raise up a righteous man from the east, okay? Now, when we continue reading, um, and then when we read the text, um, we see the comparisons of the second coming and stuff like that, right? 
um, the dust of his sword and, and he drives stubble with his bow. You know, we see the comparisons in Revelation and like Psalm 2 and stuff like that. So we know we're talking about um, the coming Messiah. Okay, so... Um, the, but then it gets into... In Psalm for, in um, Isaiah 41, it, it seems to get into how... Here we go. Which is likely the Great Tribulation. I don't have the answers to this segment of the chapter. But it's like people will be very thirsty and will be very hungry. Because the land is desolate. It's likely the Great Tribulation. and um, But the Lord is going to blow on the land and cause springs and out of the desert, etc. Supernaturally. So... Um, that's kind of besides the point, but that's just, okay. So we really get into the meat and beans, into what I'm talking about. The Billy Meyer stuff comes in, in verse 22. Okay, starting at verse 22. Okay, so let's look at this. And those who, who have been following me and, and know the story, um, will see this very clearly. And, um... So I, I just hope this settles the matter once and for all because, you know, hallelujah, God bless these scriptures and it, it's it's pretty profound. Okay. And, and I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to condemn. It's not my place to judge, but it is my place to protect our brethren and and to um, de-corrupt the body of Christ and our brethren. So I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to step out and um, and share this information. So verse 22 is where we get into the Billy Meyer information. Okay, let, let them bring them a particular people. Now this is referring to the Pleorans. Okay, let them bring them forth and show us what will happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them. And know the latter end of them. And declare us things for to come. So that's what the Billy Meyer information does. They tell us about our past. And they have future prophecies about the latter end as well. Although they completely reject Jesus as the Messiah. They don't even acknowledge the existence of God. And um, the Bible is pretty much a sham. Um, and corrupted to them, generally speaking. Um, and so forth. We all know. And you know, a lot of us have... And myself, I've, you know, we've all have been kind of wounded through this. But so anyway, um, show the things that are to come hereafter that we may know that ye are gods. OK, so we know the people we're talking about are the advanced extraterrestrials. OK, the Pleorans that ye are gods, you know, that we came from aliens and that the whole thing ye. You do good or you do evil that we may be dismayed and behold it together. So they are they are eating and coming from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Behold, you are nothing and your work is not. An abomination is he that chooseth you. So, I don't know who the you is. That could be Mr. Edward Meyer. But it's clearly saying the Pleorans. The source of this information is an abomination. And it's from the serpent. And it's from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Which we... And this is a confirmation that we should not be eating out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil as well. And what does the tree of knowledge of good and evil? It's occult information. Occult does not mean bad. It could be good or evil. It means hidden. And it lures people in because this information is hidden. So, wow, isn't that enticing? Isn't that interesting? Wow, this is amazing. Look how this pans out. Look at this. Look at that. And it lures people in. Keep searching. And it lures people in by continuing to search. Okay? Um, so, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. So, that is the trap of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, okay. so let's continue reading. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come from the rising of the sun. Shall he come upon my name? 
and he shall come upon princes as upon mortar, and as the potter treadeth clay. So, just like earlier in the chapter, right, verse 2, a righteous man was raised up from the east. And when we read, this is clearly a reference to the Messiah. And in 25, it's clearly this is the same person. So we could say that he's coming from the northeastern hemisphere, right? And the Messiah is going to come from the northeastern hemisphere. Now continue reading. Who has declared from the beginning that we may know? So we're still talking about the Billy Meyer case here. And before time that we may say he is righteous. Okay, so I'm not saying I fully understand this, but I'm saying that we know that even, you know, Jesus from 2000 years ago, that um, Yeshua you know, who has declared from the beginning, he is the ancient of days. He is the foundation of creation. Where the Billy Meyer case claims that Mr. Edward Meyer is all of our prophets, even Jesus Christ himself, incarnation. Yet, um, etc. Um, so I'm sorry if this is hurtful, but the... These prophecies clearly state that the source of this information, I'm not condemning Mr. Edward Meyer, but the source of this information, um, the Pleiarans, these gods, aliens, are the ones that are clearly being condemned as from the serpent, according to the text. And I'm sorry, I, I can confirm that. So... Who hath declared from the beginning that we may know? Like, maybe it's saying that, you know, because they, well, who are you to say you're the prophet of the time, etc., this and that. And before time, that we may say, He is righteous. Ye, there is none that showeth you, there is none that declareth you, and there is none that heareth your words. So, um, you know, it clearly says that it's pretty much stating that um, the righteous man who's being raised up um, got involved in this in this information, got involved in the Billy Meyer UFO case, and nobody was there to help him. Nobody, they didn't give him the time of day, despite his searching and stuff like that. Um. The first shall say, Zion, behold, behold them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings, for I beheld, and there was no man. So, I'm not saying I fully understand this text, but we do know the Billy Meyer information does not bring good tidings to Zion. They condemn the origins of the Jewish people as complete scum of the earth. Um, it's not an anti-Semitic thing. I wrote about this, okay? It's not an anti-Semitic thing. It's just saying they came, they were a false chosen people and they chose themselves and all this stuff, okay? Um, now, I wrote about this, so, and I took my book down, so, but I, I made, if you wanted to know why I was drinking it, you know, I made my compassionate case and I did my, my very best to, um, you know, I came with it with, with a pure heart and I wrote about it in a pure heart and with a compassionate, loving heart. And with, that was not in condemnation. But, um, behold, so we're saying, for I beheld, and there was no man. So, even among them, and there was no counselor, that when I asked of them, could answer a word. So even though this raised up man was mixed in with this information. They weren't helping him. They did not help him. They didn't give him the time of day. They didn't lift a finger to help him out. Despite how much he bled over the material. Behold, they are all vanity. Their works are nothing. Their molten images are wind and confusion. And that's exactly what that information is. It's nothing but wind and confusion. And I could testify to that because I, I 
you know, I, I gave myself in that confusion for a very long time. Um, okay, so I'm sorry if I got a little heated. Um, Lord, forgive me if I'm condemning. But I'm sorry, I'm just telling the truth. And I think this is an important truth to share. Because again, I, I was drinking out of this trough and drinking your sheep uh, water from this trough. And please let it be exposed for what it truly is. Again, I am not purposely condemning Mr. Edward Meyer. Um, the texts clearly are condemning the Pleiarns, the source of this information, that they are deceivers, that they are of the serpent, and an abomination, and give nothing but wind and confusion, which um, the enemy clearly does. Okay, thank you for watching. I don't know how much of this will get cut off. So I could do a little song and dance or something for a minute and everybody could get everything.